It's time to electrify some stuff. So here's what we have uh, at the moment. You'll notice a couple of changes from last week. These are added. So uh, I thought I was just going to make another shell, but I decided I was just going to kind of make these little extra patch things to expand it up. And then uh, in the future, when I'm sure that the thing actually works, then I'll just make a new one of these. Also, the other sheet that I have, another big sheet like this, uh, it's, it's between the van and the wall, and it's kind of hard to get to. So we'll get to that later. We'll worry about them in the future. This is just a temporary brace to hold it together. Also, kind of just wanted to play with these Clecos, because I've had these a while and I haven't opened the box in a few months. So that's what we have. Uh, you'll notice this also. These are uh, the elements installed. This has two elements in it. I, I went through some struggle to put the bottom one in. The results I will share with you, I guess, now, while I do the other element right here. Uh, first off... Uh, this is not the right element for this box because this is an element for a commercial kiln and this is something that I just slapped together and uh, there's going to be one major difference. Here is the example of a kiln like that element is supposed to go into. See the difference? It's a lot bigger. It's also a lot not as rectangular. It's more roundish and uh, so that means I'm literally trying to put a round shaped element uh, into a rectangular hole that's smaller. This passes, these pass twice around. I'm passing it three times around. So, uh, yeah, we might run into an issue. Also, that element is sized to fit in this perfectly and easily and have no issues. So, clearly, it's wrong. See what I mean? Very much not, not round, not an octagon. It is, in fact, a rectangle. And the elements are a little more densely in there. Now you might not think that matters, but watch when I pull it out here. We'll, we'll get to this. We'll get to this later. Of course, they gotta package it. Fighting twisty ties. Okay, it's a flexible element. So ignoring that it's not the right length, you might wonder what's what's the deal with the shape. That doesn't matter. Well, see, it's not totally straight. It has little kinks in it, and you might notice those kinks kind of line up with with ooh, except for that one. It's got a kink everywhere you would expect a brick and it's angled about right to fit in that, that eight-sided kiln over there. It's not just a straight element, it is specifically designed for the other one. Also it's the wrong length. I believe I mentioned that multiple times. And we're going to solve at least one of them right now. So, so these kinks, they're not that big a deal. This is very, very thick, heavy canthal wire, but you can kind of kind of straighten it a little bit. You can also kind of use uh, I, I notice these little needle nose pliers, if you just kind of squeeze on the inside, they, it straightens them right out. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is lengthen it. So fortunately for me, lengthening it also kind of straightens it. And I lengthen the other one by just slipping that in, dropping it down there, and tightening it up. And then I just kind of I stick a, a tape measure in there and I pull. Now. I ran the numbers, if you remember before. Actually, I don't know if I put that in the video. Hmm. Ran the numbers, and turns out this is five inches too short. So I took the other one, lengthened it five inches, nowhere near long enough. Lengthened it more, way too long. So we're going to try to split the difference right now. Here's basically how I did it. I got the tape measure stuck in the vise. I got this stuck in the vise. If I kind of pull it tense, it's at 124. Now that's not enough. When I pulled the other one uh, all the way out to 150, well, I pulled it out to like 135, not enough. 150, too much. About six inches too much. So we're going to try aiming for 144, which is about there. So that's more than five inches. I thought I'd stretch it five inches. I failed to uh, account for something, and the math wasn't right. So the way I stretch this out, I just pull. Lean back. And now it's a little bit longer. Now this is a very flexible wire. I don't know how flexible it will stay after a few heat cycles, but I'm pretty sure these are just um, these are just like straight wire, and they wind them real tight, just at room temperature in a giant machine. So it's not like they're brittle. And really, in the grand scheme of things, I'm only stretching it like 10 percent. There we go. Just a couple more inches. Still a little more. And if I pull it, so, so like, if you don't pull it tight, it slacks down. So if I pull it so it tightens up the slack, 
That is about 140, 142, 143, and 143. I'm weak, sorry. 140, almost 144, close enough. It also has a nice added benefit of straightening out the kinks. You can see it's still like that was a kink, it straightened out the kinks, and it's still pretty tightly coiled, like it still looks like an element. Now I have mostly a straight element that's hopefully about the right length, and they, they kind of fit in there. I got these corners. So what I'm going to do is start back here at one of the holes and work around until I get to the other hole. Okay, I've adjusted your angle, so hopefully you can see this a little better. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm going to show you, I guess I'll just show you here in this corner and then rejoin when I go around. But there's an issue. This is looped, and you can't fit that through the hole. You also can't fit that through the insulator. And uh, you might have guessed, you're supposed to cut it off. Now this is canthal wire, so it's not like, it doesn't seem to cut as easy as copper, but not as difficult as like, if it were like a, a nail that big. So I kind of have to take my tin snips, which are a bit ruined, if I'm honest. Not from doing this, but from previous things that I wasn't supposed to do with them. <coughs> but we're not going to worry about that for right now. What I am going to think about right now is the distance between this hole right there, which this goes through, like that, and the corner in here, this little corner. So I just kind of line it up, up here, guesstimate that the bend will be roughly here. Remember those things are about uh, about a half inch, a little more than a half inch deep, the, the cut, the corners, and I want the bend to be at the corner in here, not here. So that way it sits in the groove all the way around the corner. And that's about here. And I just basically just kind of with my fingers, and you get a nice like 90 degree bend, right? Slide it in. Got to be a bit careful not to screw anything up. These little ledges are a bit delicate, like these cut edges, so I don't want to gouge into those too much. But there, just kind of slide in and boop! Now it's in! Now it fits kind of nicely in this groove, except for where there's another corner here. You can see that, right? It's in there, and it's, it's down in the groove. So now I have to do that again. Corner there, corner there, corner there. I'll rejoin you when I go to this difficult spot. These other corners, these are actually kind of a little easier because it's just straight. You can bend it a little bit, kind of test fit, see. Okay, maybe I should bend that one coil rotation earlier. So this process is much easier the second time. I am surprised. It's kind of difficult to bend because this is very heavy gauge wire. I think those uh, Amazon cheap Chineseium kiln elements that you see people make those electric furnaces out of, uh, they're not going to last nearly as long as these ones will. Although I'm probably going to put this one through a little beyond what it should be put through. So here, I've got to do this little like joggle up and over. So I need two 45 angles. So if I just lay it flat, Need the 45 there, then another one, you know, a bit later. Try to do this with my fingers so I don't block where the camera's pointing. I didn't do a real great job uh, cutting these grooves here. I think the, the, especially the angled parts aren't cut in really wide enough for the element to go in smoothly. Because the brick is so soft though, you can just kind of like jiggle it a little and it goes in. Although now, since this is so close to the corner, Gonna have to also place the bend for the corner. There, guesstimate, push it in. Oh, like a glove. Beautiful, and this is just holding itself in with tension. But this isn't the only, uh, only way it holds itself in. You'll see that in a minute. Come on, I really hope this is the right length. Fortunately, with it coiled so much, each, uh, like each little inch of, of coil wire here is actually many inches of length of uh, the canthal wire. So I'm not actually bending like each individual little segment all that much. Also keep in mind when you actually put in these bends, it's not just like bending, like folding a sheet of paper because it is a coil. Certain parts of it get closer together and further apart so it can actually change the length. I think that's also part of what got me. I think the main thing that got me though was I measured based on the, uh, the inside surface of this opening when I should have been measuring the inside surface of the bottom of the grooves. Let's see, did my measuring work? Oh, that's so close! It's like, see that? It's like half an inch 
See, I can probably get this is a this bit here is a bit tightly coiled. I'll just stretch that a hair. One great trick: you can use these little needle nose to do kind of spot work. You can pull some parts a little closer together, other ones a little further apart. Don't know if that's advisable because this is not the intended usage of these elements. This element, by the way, it's for a Scut 818 pottery kiln. Yeah, I think I think that's about perfect. Again, got to cut the end off. Boom! There, that fits uh, almost like it's supposed to, right? Back to the uh, old actual kiln uh, that uses similar elements. You'll see where the bricks meet. They make kind of a little 45 degree angle. These sit down in the grooves, and that almost looks almost looks like the end of a wire. They, they send these little tiny bits of wire segment, and the idea is you kind of poke those between the bricks, and it and it holds the brick holds the the element in the groove, right? And I believe they put them at the in the corners like this, probably in part because, like you you want to hold it in in the corners, and then the straight parts hold in well, but also because the uh, bricks form a nice seam, and it's easy to just push a pin between the seam. I mean, it, it appears to be working. All the elements are in place. Uh, this, however, I believe is much softer brick. Feels much softer. Uh, almost like a half, like even more foamy than the brick I have. But I developed a plan to sort of make this work. Here's a bag of the pins that comes with the elements. Each one comes with a bag of a bunch of them and a couple insulators and stuff that we'll worry about in a minute. And these pins... I think they're just little short bits of canthal. Like, they gotta be something that can stay sturdy-ish enough that they can hold up to the temperature, right? Like, this couldn't be steel. I think it'll be easier to see if I do it here. But this has a straight cut, so what I'm gonna do is take these snips and not cut straight, but cut at, a, at an extreme angle to try to get, like, a needle point on the thing. <clears throat> Don't know if this is gonna show up, but you see, needle, needle point not the blunt edge that they come with. Now if you remember, the top of this groove is straight, the bottom of it slants down. So it's actually down in a groove. It looks like on the other kiln thing, they put it at an angle up like this in the corners, uh, but I decided not to do that. I'm going to put it instead across the top. So I basically push the point to the back, slide it down, so that I know that the pin is above the element, even though it's usually sitting in a groove, like between the coils. And the, uh, the other end of the pin, the one that my hand is touching, is resting against the top of this ridge. So this pin is essentially trapping the coil down into the groove. And I put them dead center. So if I put them in the corners, these bricks are not as tightly held together. I, I'm just afraid the pin is just going to fall out. It's not going to do any good. So I put it horizontally, flat, like that, line it up so that it's touching, it's holding the thing down and it's touching this ridge, and then I gently tappy tap tap with the, with the hammer. Holding the brick, tappy tap tap. Helps also, I noticed, if I'm holding the back of the brick with my other hand, and I'm really just Tappy tap tap, and this is a soft brick, and it goes in nice and easy. I can't push it in. I tried that. This is perhaps a better angle. Just tap, 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 being very gentle. And when the pin is about flush, I stop, because I don't want to smack this brick with this hammer, because it might break it. So far, I haven't broken any of the bricks yet. And that's going to become even more important when you can see here, some of them, I mean, this is loose. It's just kind of poking out because that segment is a little bit longer than it should be. So that extra length has to go somewhere and the only place it can goes out. So the pin is going to hold it down. It might still poke out a little bit, but I've seen people use pottery kilns up to 2300 and the elements are like, basically this chunk would be broken off and the elements just drooping down. It still doesn't cause a problem. So uh, I think if I, even if I have that, if I have a pin just to hold it so that it can't really come out this far even, then I'll be okay. Okay, a couple main differences you see here. These are super long. These have crimp connectors and insulators. This insulator is tight, this one's loose. I screwed that one up. I'm sorry. I'll probably, uh, well, you'll see. I have plans for that, don't worry. First thing I'm going to do here is address the insulators. Here. 
So here's an insulator. Goes in kind of like so. And this is supposed to kind of go in the hole and this is supposed to stick out of the thing. But you notice I didn't I didn't drill the hole big enough. I made that mistake down here too and I didn't bother correcting it uh, just now because, um, you know, filming. So what I'm going to do here, I'll do this top and bottom. I'll just push that back out. And I realize this hole is too small. This is a 3 8 inch drill bit. It's kind of a long one. If I just sort of twist that hand twist, kind of hog out that hole a bit. Don't have to go very deep. And it's still just a hair too small, this drill bit. But if I kind of twist it around in there and, you know, jiggle it and whatever, then this still won't fit. But if I jiggle it around some more, it's really close. Here, oh, that is a terrible screeching noise. Can you hear that? Seriously, like if I had a 7, this is a 3 8 If I had a 7 16 that would probably be the best. Because I don't just want to, like, hog out a giant hole in this thing because kind of want there like not to be a giant opening like this is supposed to insulate or whatever being careful not to slice my thumb on this nice jagged bit of metal there see and now now it's tight showing you i still haven't quite put those pins in i just put in a couple, because I don't want to have to make you watch me do that like 50 times in a row, even though I'm going to. Good thing those are flexible. Also, good thing I really don't care about this drill bit. Now, see, insulators are tight. That's protruding through. It's not sticking out the back on the other side. Everything is still sitting nice in its grooves. These come with instructions here. Uh, they say to clip these as short as possible to still get the crimp connectors on. You can see them doing it right there. Once the element is in place, use the new pins which are included with your replacement element to secure the lement into the groove. Come on, people. Spell check. You're like a big company, right? Blah, 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 blah. Basically, cut these shorter, crimp connectors on. I, I only have the one side crimped, the other side's open, obviously, because a wire has to go in there. Big wire uh, to connect to the controller, which you'll see later, next time probably. Back to the tin snips. I've tried using my wire cutters for this. And they are just not up to the task. Or my uh, my hand, my thumbs are not up to the task of... That was harder than I wanted it to be. So this thing barely fits. But it goes in, like about so. That's as far in as it can go, because there's a little stopper. I, I could have trimmed off another millimeter. I think that's, that's enough precision. I think we can be happy with that. There's a cut on there. I'm going to crimp down. These are uh, these look a bit raggedy, but these are actually very nice wire cutters and crimpers. There's not a lot of room there to compress this thing. These are these are actually pretty nice. These are made by Klein. We tried a bunch at work. We tried a bunch of different wire cutters. They all kind of sucked, except for the Klein ones. Three, two, one. Oh man. It takes takes both hands of strength. But this now isn't just a box of brick, it is a box of brick with the kind of crappy temporary housing, or maybe it's permanent, I don't know. And uh, now it has elements, both elements. Element number one, element number number two, and uh, these will be wired up, I believe, in parallel uh, to the controller next time.